Hiya folks, welcome back to Test Tuesday. Probably the most popular wall fixings in the UK, possibly in Europe, I'm not sure worldwide, but probably the most popular ones in the UK are either your humble brown plug or the little red plug. These are only really for use in solid walls, so things like concrete, um, block work, brick, and that sort of thing. A little while ago, I tested the red plug, and we found that it could withstand a ridiculously high load in concrete blocks. And I thought it would be interesting to do a direct comparison against the brown plug uh, to see which one's better. You assume the brown plug's better, but let's test them and find out. If you don't want to listen to me ramble on for the next five minutes, you can just skip forward to <coughs> uh, six minutes and 15 seconds. Blech. These days, I must admit, I mainly use the red plug. I am gradually switching over to Fisher Duo Power plugs because they're quite a good kind of all-rounder and a good kind of problem solver type plug, but these still have their place. Great little plastic plugs for all sorts of different situations. Before we start on the actual test, I've upgraded the test rig to version two. I know a lot of people were saying, well, you know, we're not really getting an average measurement and we're not seeing the data plotted over a period of time and um, it's difficult to read the scales on the screen and uh, it creates a whole load of extra hassle having to have like a camera set up on the scales. So what I have done is I've Arduino-fied and basically given my scales a USB connection so I can connect them directly to the computer and log in real time the data coming from the scales uh, onto the computer and then I can graph it and then I can upload the graphs onto gosswithhandyman.com and you can get all that information from there if you want to have a look at the, the data in a bit more detail. I am going to make a video all about the scales and how the Arduino side of things uh, has worked. What this does now, it takes a measurement every 0.1 seconds and every half a second it aggregates those and takes an average so effectively it's taking five measurements it's taking an average of five measurements every half a second roughly also for this test i am going to run the test three times per plug but i'm not going to film it because it will be very very boring so i'm only going to film once for the brown plug and once for the red plug but when i talk about the results at the end i'll base it on an average of three sets of um, tests per type of plug. I am also working behind the scenes on motorizing the test rig. That will happen hopefully within the next month. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge finding a motor that can turn at a low enough RPM and high enough torque um, for it to be kind of practical in this scenario, but I think I found something that's gonna work, so watch this space. For the moment, I'm just going to have to try and give a fairly constant turn of the nut on top of this. But the main thing is, is that we're going to be plotting it on a graph over time and you're going to get a much better idea of how the fitting is reacting to the force over a period of time and also what the current and peak load is on the fitting as well. Just to quickly run over some of the specs, because I know people will ask in the comments, I'm testing into a medium density concrete block. I'm only going into one type of block because we don't want too many different variables in this test. The concrete block gives a nice kind of predictable substrate to fix into. This sort of concrete block in the UK costs about two quid each. It's a 7.3 Newton per square millimeter concrete block. The block itself weighs 15 kilograms which gives it a density of 1600 kilos per cubic meter. The red plugs and the brown plugs are made by Fisher. And the red ones come in at five pounds 89 for 300. And those are designed for a six millimeter hole and that can take a four to five millimeter screw. And the brown plugs are designed for an eight millimeter hole and will take a four and a half to six millimeter screw. And oh, and the brown plugs are six pound eighty nine for three hundred, so they're really cheap. So what I'm going to do to try and keep the test as fair as possible, I'm going to use the same size screw 
in each. I'm going to use a 10 gauge screw and a 10 gauge screw is about 4.8 millimeters which fits into the spec range for the red plugs and the brown plugs. So a 10 gauge screw is a, a very common screw size to use in either the red or the, or the brown. Obviously you'll probably get better results if you use like a 12 gauge screw in the brown but um, I'm not gonna. Oh and my test rig is only designed to go up to 300 kilos. As far as I'm concerned, once we hit 250 kilos, if we hit that high, it's game over. I'm not taking it past that and risking breaking my test rig. If one of these fittings can take over a quarter of a ton, that's probably going to be fine for most scenarios. Bear in mind, the last time we did this test, I managed to get 217 kilos on a red plug and I bottled it. So we'll see where we get up to. Let's crack on and test these little things. I'm gonna keep the force as evenly applied as possible. Okay, that's really interesting. 104.38 kilos on the brown plug. And you can see where it peaked up here. And we actually got a little bit of a drop. That was actually, I think, where the bolt that goes through started to bend. So that little drop there, the bolt started to bend. But that doesn't really matter because we pretty much hit the peak load anyway. But interesting. I am going to run this two more times on the brown plugs, but let's now try the red plug. Right, here goes. Exactly the same test, but this time with the red plug. We got a peak last time of 104 kilos. Let's go for it. really hard to do. Oh, there it goes. Oh no. <laughs> you know what it is. The plug hasn't budged and it's broken the uh, screw holding the thing on the bracket. Oh, how annoying. I'm going to have to start again and use a bigger screw going through that. We peaked at 230 kilos there. That's made a right mess of that uh, bracket. Right, here we go. Oh, we've passed the 250. But the interesting thing is, so we've got 260 kilos of load on this at the minute. You can see the graph is starting to kind of level out, but let's just see what happens if we leave it. Let's just see if this gets to a static figure. We're down to 2, 3, whatever at the minute, 220. But it is leveling out. Let's keep going. It's going to go off the graph. Oh, 260. Right, we've run out of graph space. We're at 290 kilos. Ignore this peak thing, it's because it's gone off the graph. We got well past 290 there. I'm going to have to modify this. <laughs> I need to fix this. I'll fix this for future versions so that it uh, lasts a little bit longer. There you go. It still hasn't failed. That is a crazy load that we've got on one single screw and one single red plug. Let me run this another Two times on the brown plug, another two times on the red plugs, and we'll average it out. We'll see what we get. Uh, okay, that's interesting. So, I've run the test now. 
three times per plug as requested and taking an average. So the brown plug on the first test came out at 104.4 kilos. Just bear in mind as a bit of a reference if you don't know what 104 kilos is, I weigh about 80 kilos. So 104 kilos isn't bad going on one single little plug. On the second test it came in at 101.8 and on the third it came in at 112.4. So average that out, it came in at about 106.2 kilograms. And in every instance the plug failed. Well, the plug itself was kind of fine, but it was kind of it, the plug pulled itself out of the concrete block. So I guess you could say it's a concrete block that failed, I suppose. It just, it, it lost its grip. The red plug. Test number one. Didn't fail and came out at 294.9 kilos. Test number two came out at 303.6 and number four, 304.9. Average that came in at 301.1 kilos of peak load and in no instance did any of them actually fail. None of the plugs pulled out, none of them were significantly loose and effectively what we've done is we've reached the absolute limit of what my test rig can handle. It's to the point where the, the nut on the top, I've had to put an extra big washer on because the washers and nut on the top had started to embed themselves all the way through the, the wood of the test rig. So this rig isn't designed to take anywhere near those kind of loads. Either way, peaked at where, over 300 kilos on one red plug with a single 10 gauge screw and it still didn't fail. And what you'll also see on the graphs as well, I'll kind of overlay them on top of each other so you can see, but the red plugs, even when you left it at a, at a static load, wasn't really going below a quarter of a ton of load on a single plug. And it was staying fairly static at that level. So what have we learned from this? Are brown plugs completely pointless? No, but you could argue that they're pointless if you're using 10 gauge screws, which I know most people who use brown plugs and red plugs, most people I know use a 10 gauge screw or a five mil screw. I would dare say that if you used a brown plug with maybe a 12 gauge, that you would get, what's, uh, sorry, for a, a brown plug, they say up to six mil, six mil max for a, a brown plug. So I dare say if you used a six mil screw, you might get similar kind of readings, maybe even higher than the red plug. Because theoretically, with the brown plug, it's a bigger surface area pressing against the uh, concrete. So theoretically, the brown plug should give you higher readings. But I think what's going on here, since the red plug has quite a big screw in it, it's just increasing the amount of friction on the inside of the, on the, inside of the hole. So the plug is pressing against the sides of the concrete harder and therefore you've got a higher friction coefficient. Ignore the fact that the brown plug has a bigger surface area. If you're increasing the amount of friction by having a smaller plug with a smaller surface area, but with a bigger force pushing the outside of the plug against the concrete, that's what you get result-wise from it. I mean, that is staggering. Well over a quarter of a ton on a single screw. As per usual, do not use my measurements for anything official. This is just a bit of fun. We're talking here purely about peak loads. We're not talking about safety factors or anything like that. Generally, when you go by the manufacturer's specs, which is what you should always do, they will have sometimes a safety factor of up to seven. But regardless of all that, it goes to confirm why for general kind of day-to-day -day work red plugs should be absolutely fine for almost every conceivable scenario and anything beyond kind of putting maybe 50 kilos on a on a red plug i would probably move over to using wall bolts or you know bigger concrete fixings and stuff like that anyway but it just goes to show 
I'm quite happy sleeping easy at night, attaching fairly significant loads to the wall, as long as you're using decent screws, using red wall plugs or anchors. All the test results and graphs will be over on the blog article on coffeewithhandyman.com when I get a chance to get that written. If you check it the second this video comes out, it's probably not ready yet. But uh, if you're watching this a couple of weeks down the line or maybe in future world, a thousand years in the future, there might still be a blog article somewhere on the internet with all the results from this test. I best plough on because it's three o'clock on Tuesday afternoon and I need to edit all this and get it uploaded by six o'clock for you beautiful people. Thank you once again for watching. Don't forget, get yourself onto Patreon if you want to help support this channel. And the Measuring Up podcast is up and running again for season two. So make sure you're following the Measuring Up podcast on your podcast player of choice. And make sure you're following my podcast buddy and co-host Peter Millard as well at the 10 Minute Workshop. Whew. I best get going. I've got three hours to get this edited and uploaded to YouTube. <laughs>